Welcome back, everybody. This is our fifth and final video on how you can be prepped for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. My name is Jamila. I'm from Farah AI, and this is Darren. He's from Clickly. And Hello. today, <laughs> we're going to be talking about how you can be making data-driven decisions to make this Black Friday, Cyber Monday your best sales yet. So let's jump right in. And let's talk about what data points to look at from last year, which is really important. So the first thing is um, traffic sources and making sure that you understand where your traffic was coming from. Um, I mean, this kind of ties into it, but your conversion rate by traffic source. So for example, most of our, we, we have mo a lot of traffic that's organic and then social, um, traffic so from facebook and stuff mm -hmm. and we make sure that like we we don't try and reinvent the wheel around black friday <laughs> right. yeah, yeah we focus on the channels that made us money last right. year so we already started like talking to people for gift guides which um pe people and influencer marketing because people will like search us and then they'll buy from us once they've like seen us somewhere. And then we already started focusing on our Facebook ads because like we talked about before, ad spend starts to increase yes. earlier. <laughs> so making sure that you can look at what your best performing traffic sources are is like a really good way to prepare for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Definitely. Um, for me, uh, a little bit more strategy, but definitely revenue um, and even more specific looking at revenue as it relates to maybe return on investment on ad spend and return on ad spend as mm -hmm. it relates to profitability. Mm -hmm. so a lot of the times I think um, return on investment in terms of your ads doesn't always correlate to profitability, the most profitability that you can get for your business. Right. So also really just looking at the, the different return on ad spends, um, if it fluctuated at all, maybe it was 3x at one point, maybe it was 5x, looking at those fluctuations and seeing where the most profitability came from, mm -hmm. so you can try to target those going into Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Of course, those are naturally going to fluctuate given the, the rise, um, but at least it will give you some good indication and target sets of you know, how can we be the most profitable outside of just saying, hey, we spent $5, I need $20. Right, right, right. And I guess we should tell people, depending on where they are in their journey uh, online, where they can find this information. So you can find your traffic sources in your Google Analytics. Yes. And then for revenue, um, like return on ad spend, I usually just find that in my Facebook ads manager, but I know Clickly definitely has a place for you yeah. to find we are very unique. Uh, so quickly, we, we don't require upfront spend and we're unique in that we are commission based. Mm -hmm. so we only take a commission when you drive a sit when we drive a sit. Um, the other aspect that's really cool and the, the reason why brands like working with us is you get to select your commission that you'd like to pay out. And there's multiple types of commissions to choose from. So if you have very specific CPA and or return on ad spend goals, you can mm -hmm. always set your, your payouts accordingly and those will never fluctuate. Nice. See, and that's like, that's the best. Choosing your return on ad spend before <laughs> than like oh, yeah. hoping to get it out. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, the other um, data points that you should probably be looking at are sold out products. So like, what did you sell out of last year, mm -hmm. right? And what did you think you were going to sell out of, but just sat on the shelves? So like you don't want, you typically don't want to be sold out for Black Friday, Cyber Monday if you don't have to, because you're missing out on, on profit. You're missing out on, yeah. on revenue. So that's like another thing for people to look at. And I mean, it really depends on, on like what type of program that you're using to manage your inventory. Mm -hmm. I mean, it like that's very very um, company specific, but making sure that you have that data and that you can that you can look at it is um, is important. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think going off of the inventory thing really quick. Mm -hmm. um, if you can look at that and understand your inventory from last year and make sure that you have it, it's even more so important to understand that the channels that you're running to have that that you're synced. 
Right. right? So, yeah. so you're, you might be out of something and some channel is firing off, you know, a best selling product that you sold out of. That's a bad customer experience to start with. So, exactly. kind of, you know, not necessarily related to data driven decisions, but just piggybacking off of that. I think it's really important to understand that and make sure that those channels are linked up. No, that's definitely true because I know that like we have a, we have one product that like that we sell like only through Facebook ads yeah. and like it is such a good seller and it's important for us to know that like if we run if we increase our ad spend for this particular product right. we know that we're going to sell like 50% more of these units so we have to make sure that the inventory <laughs> is not yeah. Yeah, so that's that's really important. I like that you brought that up because that's um, that's important. The other thing that you can look at is your shopper journeys and your order journeys. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Farah has the ability for you to look at your order journey and your shopper journey, and that's that's like what I mean. Obviously, I work there, but for my <laughs> for my own business, I use that too. So, when we were talking about building trust in one of the previous videos. Um, the reason that I knew that people were looking at our about us page so often is because I looked into the shopper journeys and like Farrah will show you what people clicked on, what they interacted with. Amazing, yeah. Sometimes with like Google Analytics or like whatever, or like if you're looking at Google Tag Manager, it's like so hard to just like see where people are flowing and what they're doing. It's like, right. I don't have any time for that, right? <laughs> I want to just see the data and I want it to be easy. So looking at how your customers are moving through your site is important, mm -hmm. but also seeing what they're doing on your page will help you right. to create like a better experience for your customer, a better product experience. So like you can use um, like heat maps. So there's like, there are a bunch like Hotjar, Lucky Orange, all of those mm -hmm. other kinds of um, services. And it'll show you like where people scrolled to, what people clicked on, right. and that's like, so much better than Google Tag Manager tell you there's like 75% scroll depth and you're like, okay, I kind of know what that means, but like, I want to see it. So yeah, that's there's a bit more clarity. Exactly, exactly. So I mean, from a user experience standpoint, right? You want to make sure yeah. your user experience is, is on point. And so if you can use those tools and technology to identify that a ton of my customers are hitting this thing that looks like a button. It's not yeah. a button then you can change it, <laughs> right? Uh, we, I mean, we use that a lot on, on our site as well. And it's it's so powerful and it's so important. You know, it's, it's exactly what we said. If somebody, we just know that people scroll down and that, I mean, that's great, but it doesn't necessarily help us. Like, where did they scroll to? What did they interact with? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. So having all of those data points from last year will <laughs> help you create a better, experience for your customers for this year and improve your conversion rate on site, obviously, but it'll also help you reduce your costs and make sure that you have all the things that you need for 20 for 2020. And like, this part is like not it's not like super easy and everybody has their data set up differently. So it's like right. a little bit difficult for us to be like, this is exactly mm -hmm. what you should do. But I think that um, Oh, I guess in our blog post, we can, we will put some examples on how to use uh, your data so that right. we'll have like a good understanding on like very concrete and specific examples of brands that have used their data to, mm -hmm. to make their conversion rate better or to, to make their ad spend a little bit less. So those are things that we can, we can put on there just for me anyway, like I talked about before is making our about us page a lot better has, has definitely helped with improving sales and building trust from uh, this year versus last year. So right. that's an example of using shopper journeys to make sure that like I'm giving customers what they want and I'm giving them the information mm -hmm. that they want. Yeah. So, um, okay. So I guess we can talk about, unless you have anything else to add, do you want to talk about things people can do in 24 hours or less, or do you have something else to add? Um, I mean, it's it's very tough, Shop, shopper's journey, just kind of going off of that, right? A lot of, of marketing in general these days, we know it's like a pretzel, it's not a straight line. You know, there's people are going all over and, yeah. and so just really getting uh, your tool set and your reporting set in line and, mm -hmm. and understanding what, what is first touch to last touch and there's a lot of those things that will come into play and oftentimes it's overwhelming. 
Uh, yeah. even, even with everything in terms of the data that we're talking about right now, that's super overwhelming to look at. It uh, is. So it, it might actually, I might even start off with the, the 24 hours or less. And for yes. me, it's actually, if it's so overwhelming, then just start with one. Start with yeah. one thing, focus in there and see what you can change and affect within that one area. And once you knock it out, move on to the next. It's certainly not something that's like, all right, here's the entire playbook, like, let's do it. We're changing everything that's going to overwhelm you. And you're going to just kind of want to bury yourself in bed, <laughs> not do anything. It's so true. <laughs> yeah, it's, you can only really focus on one thing at a time. And even if you have a large team, like, first of all, if you have a large team, you have a large problem. So you should probably <laughs> get your team to focus on one thing so that right. you can do well and then move on and then do do better. So I do like that. Focus, focus on, on the one thing. Um, the other thing, I guess, is to be sure to focus on your best performing channels from last year yeah. and how, like, this is not the time to start, like, advertising on Pinterest. If you've never advertised on Pinterest, before. Um, but yeah, I like I like that. And then following your customer journey using a heat map to optimize, like you don't have to optimize every single product page. Maybe right. you're just optimizing your top three product pages. You call it a day and then in January you do mm -hmm. the rest. Yeah, I mean it kind of goes to what you're saying. You don't necessarily want to experiment. So it's not it's not experimenting in that you you know what your consumers are doing, mm -hmm. but you also don't want to say, okay. This website is not good. Let's change the whole thing before Black Friday, Cyber Monday, right? That's going to send everything out the door that you knew. Exactly. So again, it kind of goes to just focus in, change one or two or three things, the things that are going to bring the most value and the most change and effect to your site. Mm -hmm. I know that initially. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. That's, uh, yeah, I, I think that's, that's good. And I feel like focus on the one thing and don't experiment <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> our advice for me. January. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, so because this is the last uh, video in our series, I want to let everybody know that we have a super sweet ebook that people can download. We yeah. are going to leave the link in the description. This is going to go over everything that we've talked about for the series, planning your ad spend, creating trust, retaining your seasonal shoppers, dealing with uh, suppliers and inventory, and making data-driven decisions. So if you need basically a Black Friday, Cyber Monday Bible, you're going to want to download it. <laughs> download it. <laughs> yes, because it's going to help you. It's going to help you for, for the season. So make sure to download that. And you can follow Clickly on all the social medias. You can follow Farah too. We'll also have that in the description. And if you want to get access to Clickly and try their uh, commission-free advertising, then we'll have that link too. And if you wanna try Farah 30 days for free, there's also a link in the description. So I, if you guys have any questions also, let us know. We're gonna answer them as you need, but we hope you have the best Black Friday, Cyber yeah. Monday ever. <laughs> And we will catch you guys another time. Take care, all. See you.